In this video, I will explain the idea of subgraphs in graph theory. So imagine that we have this graph right here. Let's call it graph G. Now, suppose that we remove this edge from graph G. This resulting graph right here, this is known as a subgraph of the original graph G. And the reason that we call it a subgraph is because all of the vertices and all of the edges in this resulting graph are a subset of the vertices and the edges of the original graph G. Now, imagine that we went ahead and removed this edge, and let's say this edge, and this edge, and this vertex. Imagine we removed all of these. This resulting graph right here is also a subgraph of the original graph G, because all of the vertices and all of the edges in this graph also belonged to the original graph G. Now imagine that we add an edge. So let's say we add this new edge right here. This resulting graph right here, this is not a subgraph of the original graph G because now we have an edge that was not originally in graph G. So in other words, the edges in this graph are not a subset of the original edges in graph G. So now that we've given that quick introductory example, let's give a more formal definition of a subgraph. We say that given a graph G with a vertex set V of G and edge set E of G, we say that another graph, let's call it H, is a subgraph of G if and only if the vertex set of H is a subset of the vertex set of G. So this symbol means subset. And the edge set of H is a subset of the edge set of G. So another simple way of saying that is that all of the edges and all of the vertices of this new graph H must belong to the vertices set and the edge set of the original graph G. So that's what makes it a subgraph. So as a little extra practice, let's consider this graph right here, G. It has five vertices. I've labeled them A, B, C, D, and E. Let's check if each of these graphs, H, I, and J, are subgraphs of G or not. So let's consider graph H. We can see that it has four vertices, A, B, C, and D. Each of these vertices belong to the vertex set of G. So in other words, the vertex set of H is indeed a subset of the vertex set of G. And we can also see that each of the four edges in graph H also belong to graph G. So we would say that the edge set of H is also a subset of the edge set of G. So because both requirements are met for the definition of a subgraph, we would say that H is a subgraph of G. All right, now let's check out graph I. So we can see this one also has four vertices, A, B, C, and D, all of which belong to graph G. And we can see that this graph only has one edge that connects vertices C and D. And we can see that this exact same edge exists and the original graph G. So we would say that the edge set of I is a subset of the edge set of G. So this graph also meets the requirements for a subgraph. And then lastly, let's consider graph J. So it has four vertices, A, B, D, and E. So each of these vertices belongs to the original graph G. So we would say that the vertex set of graph J is a subset of the vertex set of graph G. But when we look at the edges of graph J, we'll notice that an edge exists that connects vertex A to vertex D. And this edge does not exist in the original graph G. So we would say that the edge set of graph J is not a subset of the edge set of graph G because we have this new edge that we created and this edge does not belong in graph G. So because we have an edge that exists in J that does not exist in G, we would say that graph J is not a subgraph of graph G. So those were just a few examples of how to determine if a particular graph is a subgraph.